my class. So for this session, we're going to discuss the costs by nature of behavior. We all know that there are three kinds of costs. First is the fixed cost, second is the variable, and third is the mixed cost. Let's first define what is fixed cost. Fixed costs are costs that are constant in total within the relevant range of activity, but variable on a per unit basis. As the activity level increases or decreases, total fixed costs remains constant but unit cost declines or goes up. Examples of which are depreciation using straight line method, factory rent and factory taxes, factory insurance, supervision fee, and wages of indirect laborers. So now, let's discuss what are, what's the definition of relevant range. I think we all, what you have to establish first is the definition of relevant range. Okay. So relevant range is defined, is a limit is defined as a limited range of activity within which expenditures can be accurately classified as fixed costs or variable or the range over which an assumed cost relationship is valid for the normal operations of a firm. So, let's to give you a concrete example of what relevant range is. Um, let's just um, assume a machine. So, let's say for a machine, in a normal shift of 8 hours, the machine can produce 1,000 units of, of bottles. So it, it only means that the, the relevant range is the 1,000 units that, that can be produced in a shift. So um, let's say the, the policy of the company is that only one shift is required for each working day. So we can assume that the, the, that the maximum production of the machine um, has a capacity of 1,000 units of bottles, okay? So the fixed cost, let's say the fixed cost that is stated in the problem would only refer to the 1,000 units produced. So 1,000 and, 1, 1, and up, it would not be um, classified as, as being in the relevant range um, already. So those 1,000 and below the units produced, that is considered as uh, proponent of relevant range. So I think the technique here for us to to properly um, remember the difference between fixed, variable, and mix is having this diagram: the total cost and the per unit. For total cost, for fixed cost, the total cost would be constant. Let's say um, constant is twenty thousand. Say renting a renting a machine is. Um, 20,000 pesos. So whatever happens, you're gonna pay 20,000 pesos monthly. Okay? So the per unit, this is where the variable component of a fixed cost happens. So the total cost for fixed cost is constant as to the total amount, but in the but the per unit of the fixed cost changes, either increases or decreases. Let's just say for example, um, the total cost of renting a factory equipment is 20,000 pesos. And we all know um, that, the, that the relevant range is 1,000 pesos. Okay? So let's assume also that for a, for a month, the machine is only good in producing 1,000 units. So we're going to divide um, the, the cost, the cost, 20,000. And the units produced, or the capacity of the machine, which is 1,000 units. Let's just, this, let's just say this is on a monthly figure and um, monthly basis. Okay. So, for the total cost, we all know that whatever happens 1,000 and below, if, if you produce 1,000 or below units, you're still going to pay 20,000 units, uh, 20,000 pesos. Okay, but let's just say for so for if, if you want to deck, if you want to get the fixed cost per unit, we, we just simply have to divide the twenty thousand divided by the units um, capacity. So twenty thousand divided by um, one thousand units. The fixed cost per unit is twenty pesos. Okay. So if one thousand pesos, if if, if one thousand units, you're gonna have twenty pesos per unit. Let's say, um, 
you've you've only utilized um, 500 units. So, um, let's just put it here. So, if you just produce 500 units, your fixed cost per unit would be still 20,000 pesos, but your fixed cost per unit would be greater now because you weren't able to fully utilize the capacity of the machine. So 20,000 divided by 500 units, that would be 40 pesos per unit. Okay. So guys, this is the concept of um, properly utilizing the machinery. I think this is, you, this is, of, this is of common knowledge, um, the term, um, the term sulitin. Because in here, we would like to reap the maximum benefits that you would be able to get. If you are paying 20,000 pesos in a month for 1,000 units capacity, as much as possible, we want to produce the total capacity of 1,000 units. Because we all know that if you produce less than this one, this, this is already um, an incremental product cost. Okay? And we all know that the product cost is the basis for for is, is a basis for setting the, the selling price or the markup price okay so here in this uh, figure below we all know that whatever the activity is okay let's say this is a per hour let's say activities um number of units produce number of units produced or number number of hours whatever happened guys the total fixed cost would be constant but um, but the activity or the units produced or the number of hours used um, it would differentiate here so it would be lower so if you have 20 if you have 2,000 pesos fixed cost and you only have um, 10 units of activity you're gonna have um, a fixed cost per unit of 200 pesos same goes to um, 20 units produced, you're gonna have 100 pesos um, fixed cost per unit. Okay, so that's the concept for fixed cost. For variable cost, um, the total cost, the total cost would be variable, so it would vary, so it can decrease or increase. However, the per unit basis would be at a constant. So this has an inverse relationship with the fixed cost. Okay, so whatever you know with the fixed cost, um, that is the opposite of the variable. Okay, so the diagram here states that this is your total variable cost. You have here in your um, y-axis your 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pesos. And you have here in your x-axis your activity or your number of units produced or your number of hours. So if you have... Um, 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 if you have 10 units produced, okay, the the total variable cost would be um, 1,000 pesos. If you have 20 units produced, you're going to be total variable cost of 2,000 pesos. So what does this mean? If you divide 1,000 divided by 10 and 2,000 by 20, your variable cost would be, your variable cost per unit would be, um... 10 pesos per unit. Same goes here for 20, 10 pesos per unit. And same here goes for 30 units reduced. Your total variable cost would be 3,000. Again, your variable cost per unit would be 10 pesos per unit. Okay? Basic. Okay. So now, here's a bit of a challenge. You have your mixed cost here. So, um, let's just um, formally um, define variable costs. So these are costs that vary in total in direct proportion to changes in the volume of production. Variable costs is constant amount on a per unit basis as activity changes within a relevant range. As activity changes, total variable costs increases or decreases proportionately with the activity change but unit variable costs remain the same. Example are, examples are direct materials and direct labor, fuel and other factory supplies, overtime premium, material handling costs, and maintenance costs. So now let's proceed with the last um, nature of behavior of cost, which is the mixed. So mixed cost is defined as um, having both fixed and variable component, such as 
heat, light, and water expense. So, for mixed costs, you have two types of mix, mixed costs. First, you have your semi-variable costs. Okay, you have this one, semi-variable. And you have your um, step costs. This should be step costs. So, sir, what is the difference between semi-variable and step costs? So, we all know that the mix has a component of fixed and variable, right? So, in here, for example, of semi-variable cost, um, there's a fixed, there's a, um, already a fixed amount or, or stated amount of 20,000 pesos. So, this region, whatever happens, you're, got, you're already going to pay this one. Okay, sir, where is the variable um, component of that one? The 20,000 20, to 30,000 or this region, this is your variable, this is your variable component. To give you an example of what a prime example of semi-variable cost is, is um, take a look at the example of um, renting out a delivery truck. Okay, so in the... In the corporate world, um, delivery, some delivery trucks are purchased by the company or sometimes they are rented. Okay, So, um, in the contract, let's say if you rent a delivery truck, what happens is that you, you, pay, you pay in advance a fixed amount, okay, like 20,000 pesos, and there's, a, and there's a stipulation in the contract that for every... Um, for every for every kilometer um, run by the truck, you're gonna pay a hundred pesos for that one. Gets? So again, um, the fixed cost is that the twenty thousand pesos you're gonna have to pay it um, as a rental fee, okay? And there is a stipulation in the contract wherein you pay one hundred pesos for every kilometer um, driven, okay, or run by the by the delivery truck. So let's just take for example, for the month. Um, the com the company was able to to to, util to utilize the, the truck for 100 kilometers. So what happens, guys, is that um, we all know that the kilometer, the per kilometer amount is 100 pesos. Okay, so 100 pesos. So if the if the company used 100 kilometers, you're gonna multiply 100 kilometers the PVT this one by the variable cost per unit of 100 pesos so 100 times 100 um, 10,000 pesos there's an incremental amount of 10,000 or the total variable cost would be 10,000 pesos plus your fixed cost of 20,000 that's why um, for for 100 kilometers um, driven you're gonna pay a total of 30,000 pesos understood sir what if company only utilized it for 25 kilometers so similar you multiply the um, the level of activity which is 25 kilometers by the variable cost per unit of 100 pesos so 25 times 100 pesos you have a vari total variable cost of 2,500 then you add the total fixed cost of 20,000 pesos you're gonna get um, 22,500 Understood? Good So um, The next type of mixed cost Is the step costs Sir, what is step costs? So step costs um, This is divided as Having a step, literally having a step For every activity that happens You're gonna take a leap um, Upwards Okay so to give you a prime example, let's just take for um, let's let's imagine um, having a a review center. Okay, so let's just say we have daily daily review center. Okay, so my my company policy is that for every ten students, there should be one reviewer or one professor. Okay. And the salary of the professor, of each professor, is um, one prof is equals to 10 pesos salary. Okay? So this is the given. 
for every professor, I'm gonna give him a salary of 10,000 pesos. So also, like, per company policy is that for every 10 students, um, the professor will handle, I mean, I mean, one professor will handle 10 students. Yes? Okay. So let's say, for example, um, um, Dane Review Center was only able to admit 10 students. So this means that I'm gonna, I'll just need um, to hire one reviewer. So because, uh, because of the level of activity, which is the number of students, 10, I'm just gonna have to employ one, one professor, okay, one professor, and I'm gonna give him a salary of 10,000 pesos. Okay, but what what happens is that, of course, 10 is a very low amount for a review center. Let's just say, for example, there was, um, there, I mean, there were um, 30, 30 um, students who enrolled in my review center. So, my level of activity is already 30. But again, the dilemma is here is that for every, for every professor, it can only handle a, a maximum of 10 students. So what will happen in here is that I'm going to need to hire three professors, okay? So for the three professors, I'm going to give them a salary of 10,000 pesos each. So I'm going to have a total, um, I'm going to have a total um, mixed cost of 30,000 pesos. So this one should match. Again, if you divide 10,000 pesos by um, by 10 students, I'm going to have 1,000 as a per unit basis. Well, similar here, if I employ um, 3 professors with 10 pesos salary each for 30 students, I'm going to have a per unit cost of still 1,000 pesos. Sir, what happens? If you if there are if there are only um, thirty five, what happens, sir? Thirty five. There are only thirty five enrollees, but the problem is that. Um, but the problem is, um, for e for every, for every, um, professor, it can only handle ten. Guys, this is a good question. What would happen here? I have 35 enrollees or I have 35 students, how many professors do I have to um, hire? Do I hire 3 or do I hire 4? Again, based on the general rule, for every 10 students, 1 professor. So any increments um, of 1, 1 and up, you're gonna automatically have to hire another one. Okay? So for 35 enrollees, I'm, I'm forced to, to hire another professor. So what happens is that I already have four professors, four prof, four 35 students. Okay? So, um, my per unit basis would be, again, for here, since it's not, this is not equal, the professor, for, for, for um, let's just, um, Imagine um, you only have an incremental of five students, but you're gonna need to have a one professor. So what happens is that um, you're gonna have a larger per um, unit per cost, okay, of one thousand one hundred forty. So that's the difference of that one, sir. There's only eleven, eleven students who enrolled. Is it okay if the professor handles? I mean, is it okay, sir, if you just hire one professor for 11 students? Again, the company policy is that um, for every um, professor, it can handle only 10 students at the maximum. So what happens is that I'm already, I'm, again, I'm already, again, I'm forced to hire two professors and gonna hire them 10,000 each. So I'm gonna have to give them 20,000 and total salary of 20,000 pesos to handle or to accommodate 11 students. Okay? So that's the concept for mixed cost. So for mixed cost, we have the we have other methods of separating um, the variable and fixed components of that one. We have the scatter graph method. We have the high low method, and we have the least um, 
regression is the query method. Okay? But we're gonna just um, tackle the high low method. So for again, recap, fixed cost. If within the relevant range, total cost should be constant and the per unit basis should be variable. Okay? So as the num as the level of the activity increases, the per unit the fixed cost per unit decreases. However, if the activity level decreases, the fixed cost per unit increases. Okay? So for the concept for total cost, if you want to fully utilize your payment, um, maximize or fully utilize your uh, level of activity. Okay? So for variable cost, inverse relationship with, with fixed cost, um, the total cost would be variable while the per unit basis would be constant. So whatever happens, let's say, um, for a, man, for a um, share manufacturer, um, the wood is, let's say, 20 pesos um, per block. So whatever happens, if you produce 1,000 units of chairs, you're gonna have to pay um, 20,000, I mean 20 pesos per unit for each um, wood purchased, okay? So for a mix, you have your semi-variable and step cost. So semi-variable, this is um, usually applicable for uh, telephone lines, um, um, electricity bills, uh, rent like the like the um, delivery trucks. For step cost, this is um, more applicable for um, agents, um, manpower agency. Okay, so that's it for your costs by nature of behavior.